All right, guys, happy Finance Friday. Before we begin the video, I want to remind you guys, if you're buying, selling uh, collections, I am looking to buy. Uh, I have plenty of cards to sell. Contact me, call me, text me at 206-914-7974. Been making a lot of deals. If you're looking for a consignment, I can offer an advance. Uh, I can sell on my eBay store. We have uh, hundreds of listings all the time, so please contact me again. Email me at daniel at vintagemagic.com or call or text 206-914-7974. Enjoy life, guys. Happy Friday. Enjoy the video. What's up, guys? Happy Finance Friday. It's me, Daniel, with vintagemagic.com. All right, guys, so today's video... As you can see from the title, I want to talk about the collapse of the Magic Secondary Market, specifically older Magic Gathering cards, sealed product, stuff in that area, uh, since the 2020-2021 era of basically free money, 0% interest rates, low interest rates, you can borrow for nothing for housing market, and now everything went crazy. So obviously you guys know that in... 2022, 2023, basically, uh, the interest rates went crazy, causing the market for uh, real estate itself to slow down dramatically. So loans uh, are, you know, anywhere from five to six to seven percent range, and uh, Magic the Gathering uh, cards at the time uh, were at an all-time high from 2021, 2022, 2020. Uh, where interest rates were probably around two, two low as two percent or so for mortgage. Uh, probably three is probably median type of thing, but you can get under three pretty easily. So, with that environment, things really uh, picked up for the Magic Gathering market, sports cars, etc. And now Magic's definitely been hurt with this up this change. So, I want to talk about what has caused this and what I think is going to happen and how to kind of deal with this on this turbulent, weird time, right? So uh, one of the things that I thought about was why did this all happen? And a few things happen. Obviously, interest rates occur, but uh, the, the, the downturn, the, the lower interest rates by the Fed and everything. But what also needs to happen is the supply of magic cards, of the older magic cards uh, to sell was higher than normal in comparative to the number of buyers. So what I'm finding is that the number of new buyers, I'm not talking about uh, you know, existing clients, stuff like that, or deals that they had before. I'm talking about new money, new buyers, entering the market has declined in general. Uh, also, the existing buyers themselves are cautious, right? You may have already had a collection of older cars, you were making a set, uh, you were buying artwork, whatever. So what happened was you slowed down your spending, causing the market, you know, with the increased supply in some way, the balance of that, uh, the supply was greater than the demand, right? So in the 2021, 2022, 2020 eras, the supply was very low, demand was off the charts. So obviously, economically, that produces a really big time bull market, which you saw. So that's uh, also part of the equation. I also think in general, I think that there is a wallet fatigue of buying. I think in general, like if you were, uh, since you're, you're gonna be cautious about your expenses in general, maybe travel, you have kids, you might be you know, saving up for other things, other projects, you may be delaying some of that stuff. Delaying the projects, delaying the travel, delaying other uh, going out experiences, life experiences. I'm not saying people are stopping that completely, like the 2027, 20, 2008 crash, the real estate crash, but I think there's definitely a concern. So that also includes luxury spending, which is really odd because in the 20, 2007, 2008 era, Magic the Gathering, I think, took somewhat of a dip, but it really wasn't in a way because people still wanted to play with their cards. They they collected. They needed something to do. It's kind of like alcohol, right? You're not going to stop drinking or whatever for people that drink. 
because you're gonna, you know, you're bored at home. You essentially, you know, you might have a depressed time. The real estate market's bad, but drinking is usually the last thing. And so are collectibles in some ways because the decks that you play with for Magic, you're gonna be like, man, I really don't want to sell my decks, but if I really have to, then I will. So I think. Those are the key factors that happen. Now, one question I thought about was what what really is uh, what is the buyer's really main concern, right? Is it uh, because there's a lot of great supply out there, right? The prices are lower, uh, so they're lower than before. They're on a discount. The supply is greater, so you have a better selection in some way. Why wouldn't the, those two factors? entice buyers to see an attractive market and the only thing I could to really think about is this other than plain old fear right is that in general I really feel like in magic gathering aging as we age it's a weird era because with magic 30 and 30th anniversaries this year you know I'm 43 now right so magic came out basically when I was 13 okay so, but if you're 43 or you're high 30s or even 50s, you're not going to really, you're, there's a kind of an ending point at some point, right? Where you transition your collectibles to your family. Or you may just put a full stop due to age and kind of that timing. Um, obviously, if things were attractive like they are now, prices are lower, way lower than 2021, 2022. Why aren't people buying like crazy? You know, don't you want to fill out those sets? Uh, you know, where are the investors? And that brings a very important point. How many actual magic people are actually investors and taking advantage of this downward trend? Or are uh, most of the people uh, buying right now still the players and the collectors and everything? And I have to say, I thought about that and most, in my opinion, most of the money that's coming in are investors and dealers uh, in the sense that they're um, and not talking about like LGS stores because their money is very tight in this type of market. I'm talking about more people focus on like European dealers, backpack dealers, uh, you know, people that sell on Facebook, stuff like that. There's a growth in that type of market because those people tend to work on very low overhead. They don't, their capital is very focused on specific areas of magic, maybe older, newer, etc. And when we're talking about older, uh, the capital is obviously, you know, the idea is to flip, make, make a margin, move forward, right? Or you do consignments, etc. collection buying, trading, you know, whatever. So I really think that there is a growth in that area, that sector. Uh, maybe I'd consider that one of those. Yeah, because I don't have a, you know, I have an online store. I have an eBay store. Um, I've built a community through YouTube, and you know, gain recognition. But all in all, you know, you know, I think people. What? What happened? I mean, I'm doing a video. Hey, tell everybody you got. Oh no! Tell everybody how uh, did you graduate from kindergarten? Yeah. How do you feel? Tell everybody. Say hi. Uh, this is Nick, everybody, my son. He's now six. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and help him out for a second. All right, I'll, I've lost my thought. All right, sorry about that. My kid does that. If you guys watch my other videos, Nick has, over the years, grown up uh, as a baby and got in the videos. There's been some funny, funny moments. So if you guys have some favorite moments, put in the comments below. Love to hear about it. If you watch the older videos, he'll be in there quite a bit. All right, so kind of where I'm going to want to go with this is that I really feel... There has been a really um, downward spiral that now I think that it's, I think there's still room for it to go down on certain areas. For example, I think um, like certain reserveless singles that were heavily bought and the prices jumped like crazy. It could be the four, four horsemen sets, stuff like that. Even alpha beta, you know, those could go down further. I think certain seal product, certain seal product products can really go down further. That rose up qu quite high. I think like the premier thing, like uh, alpha starters, you know, for example, those will hold relatively consistently. But the ones like the dark, fallen empires, 
some legends, antiquities for sure, Arabian Nights. There has been some downward pressure in that area due to the fact that, yeah, you know, people have to sell their product and raise cash. And also revised, obviously, fourth edition, those type of things, right? So the next point I'm going to finish off with is why are people raising cash? Ah, interesting. If you still have your job, think about this. If you still have your job, you have your, your wife's working, let's say, or you're still maintaining somewhat of a lifestyle, you're going out to eat, you're buying birthday presents, you're having parties and such, you're going on a trip here and there, you may not be going as frequent, but you go on a trip, uh, you, may have, you may still you know, buy, buy a car, right? You know, still do some uh, other activities, go to the movies, right? Stuff like that. You're not reducing those uh, entertainment things, right? So why are you raising cash? Well, I thought about it from a perspective of a, a family, a typical family of, of two, uh, and they're a family of four, you know, two kids, two adults, and how they would think about that. And I realized that even if you had one job or two jobs, the what I could think about is peace of mind, peace of mind. And I feel like because of the 20, 2007, 2008 tobacco, a lot of people want to have cash available because they don't want to miss out on stocks or other, base, other investments like that that could go down quite a bit. So back in 20, 20, 2007, 2008, a lot of those like stocks like Bank of America, General Electric, they went to like a dollar. And if you would have bought them today, you would have got like 30 extra money. I am so sorry, held them today and bought them at one dollar. 30 extra money. It's insane. It's like Bitcoin basically. And so you wonder, like, are people, you know, I, well, I, not wondering, but I, I know that I've talked to other families, and they don't want to miss on opportunities to make an incredible, uh, you know, addition to their portfolio and make more money in the downturn, even though they have their job, even though they have luxuries in place, right, still do stuff. People want to take advantage of it and they want to get more wealthy, right? And that's kind of a, a good, I think that's good because I think people really take uh, that kind of, you know, like, uh, you know, retiring faster is something that people are really discovering that, hey, it's more important to retire faster when you're younger, enjoy your life. So why not take advantage on downward times? Because in markets of any kind, they go up and down. So, is Magic the Gathering kind of in that same pattern now it's the, more of a downturn or will it go down more? And I think that it is a good time to buy if you have the extra cash, but I wouldn't be surprised I see another 15 to 30%, I said it, 30% additional downward pressure. Uh, I don't think we're done yet. Uh, I feel that other YouTubers may have said that uh, this year there might there'll be growth I'm not sure about that. I have a feeling that it's going to go down more in 2023. Now, I'm not saying every single item. Now, I, you know, there's marquee items that occur that are like, you know, alpha power, right? Uh, those will finally flatten out and go bounce back because the supply alone and the great quality uh, type of thing, those tend to not be available as much. And the higher quality cards, especially, uh, you know, those people don't really need the money. You know, they, they only sell those if they need to buy a house or they need to buy, you know, retirement for their, uh, you know, their future or if they have their kids college, something like that, major medical events. But usually there's more capital, more savings. So, yeah, I think that's kind of what I wanted to get at here is that, you know, I really think people now, as they're selling their collection, it's kind of like they just want a peace of mind. They have like a back, like kind of a backup plan. And I've heard even wives get involved, like, hey, you know, telling husbands or boyfriends or whatever, like, hey, why don't you raise some money so there might be opportunities to invest or you never also know your job. And that brings to the final point is that, yes, a lot of people are fearful they might lose their job. There might be a, a risk uh, for the market in general, right? And inflation, another factor, is still very, very high. You know, costs of goods are still at an all-time high in many ways. Gas is ridiculous. Housings are ridiculous. So why why is it that, you know, people, so it makes sense that people are naturally thinking, man, 
I need more money to maintain a lifestyle or the same lifestyle. And if I'm cutting back, I should have, you know, a, a backup plan, some peace of mind, and my collectibles and magic that I really don't like anymore or I don't collect or I got done, you know, I didn't complete that Arabian Nights set. You know, I didn't finish that Legend set or Antiquities, right? Whatever, revised set. I have these extra newer cards. I see an insane amount of uh, selling of foils, modern cards, you know, the newer cards, even Commander Staples, whatever, because Wizards is selling uh, or is printing this stuff like crazy. And there's going to be the new b big serial number card that's coming out, you know, all the time. So it's like all the stuff I invest the money in. Now the issue here is you have a situation where, you know, my cards are going to be worth half the price next week or next month or whatever when they launch the next set, right? So you have fear that way. It's just an ongoing cycle. So I really would be preparing, you know, for, you know, I, I would look out for buys. I would look out for, I'm buying, I'm still buying like crazy, right? So I would look for buys. I would look for opportunities. But I also think you should consider uh, looking at options to, honestly, like save your money. I mean, right now, uh, putting your money in like a, uh, you know, a Capital One or a SoFi account or just go to bankrate.com. Uh, they have like a, a mo a money markets or savings accounts, checking accounts that basically give you like up to, almost up to 5% or so APR on your money. Minimum balance doesn't even matter. It's crazy right now. So you let's say you have $100,000 or a million dollars, let's say. You get $50,000 a year for putting a million dollars into account. Now remember... Um, there is an FDIC insurance, so if something happens to the bank, they only cover $250,000 for each account. So be a little careful. Obviously, a million dollar example is a little you know, large, but let's go 100,000, right? 100,000, you're gonna get 5,000 a year just to leave $100,000, right? And it, that's pretty attractive. That's free money. You have to pay taxes at that, on that. Uh, for next year's uh, you know taxes, if it stays the whole year, you'll be making five grand, right? Uh, or you know a little bit more. It's compounded. But why buy magic cards, right? Why buy rental property? You're putting up so much online, you know, uh, fr upfront capital. The only way you could actually make any money off those kind of things is, well, for real estate, you're predicting that the future will go up. You make more on the equity. Well, for stocks, obviously, you know, you're waiting for downturns and then buy them low, sell high. And then obviously with collectibles and the magic, you're looking to either flip the collection, make more than that 5% quickly, or you're trying to use that money to, you know, uh, you know, uh, long-term hold some of the stuff. Like it could be packs, you know, some of the packs have gone down, you know, 30, 40% in some cases. Well, you buy the packs now, hold them until they go 10 to 20 percent you instantly make some more money so not a bad gig right so there are opportunities to buy items collectibles or even like other uh normal assets but you know you could also look at just saving so what a crazy environment we're in all right guys so here put in the comments below looking forward to hear more about what you guys think uh i'm gonna try getting on get more on with the videos of a lot of ebay items different auctions coming up. Uh, if you have looking for anything for sale, uh, you're buying, selling, trading, always text or call me at 206-914-7974. Email me at daniel at vintagemagic.com. All right, guys. Thanks again. Take care. Hey, everyone. It's me, Daniel, with vintagemagic.com. I want to share with you more about how we handle consignments. So to begin the consignment process, we actually need to start with the consultation service. In this consultation, I will determine what you're looking to do. And generally consigners usually tell me, hey Dan, I'm looking to sell my items and maximize the value of their collection. After we determine through the consultation, I usually like to do an appraisal process. And in the appraisal process in terms of a consignment is more fitted towards authenticity and valuation for current market values. From there, after a contract is crafted and signed, we will then receive the items from you. The reason why our consignment process is very thorough is we also identify cards that could be graded 
so then they can maximize higher dollar values. So the payment process is very simple. Once we have sold your items, you'll get an updated ledger and we will process payment um, for whatever form of payment you need. As a consigner, you're gonna experience our white glove service. What that means is I'm gonna personally handle your collectibles from beginning to end. And rest assured, the client that purchases your collectibles will also receive the same white glove service. It's a signature service that I really pride myself on in working closely with my clients. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.